before order comes into the world. And we'll see also that there is world powers changing. And uh, Africa is also positioning herself as a world leader. So watch out for Africa and black people rising and taking their rightful place in the world. Because the time is now. The time is now. It has been foretold. And if you have eyes to see, you will see. If you have ears to hear, hear it. But more than that, feel it within yourself. What are you feeling as a black person? Do you feel a change? Do you feel a shift? Do you feel new energy rising within you? I would say, let it out. Let it out. Hello and welcome to African Living Abroad. I am Jamhuri and I'm here to share my international experiences, build bridges between cultures with the hope of making the world a better place. I consider myself a social observer, a commentator and interpreter of social events and a storyteller. As I address uh, Black History Month this year of 2024, I have grown to understand a lot more about uh, black people and why we are where we are right now and why we are so confused and why there is a need for black history. And if there's anyone to write or to talk about black history, it will have to be black people because that history has been written by other people and has defined a black people to a great disadvantage. And uh, recently a family member asked me, uh, said there's so many people in this world that have been oppressed, who've been colonized. And, and why is it that, you know, it seems like only black people are still fighting for their uh, for their rights and you know they're not satisfied to just sit down and shut up and th the first thing that came into my mind has to do with my own story where I am at right now it's because as you live your life there are many questions that you will ask yourself based on how you have been defined as a black person and wherever you are, you feel that there is something that is not okay with you. There isn't. And when you have a chance to mingle with other nations of people, the way I have, for instance, in Canada, I have seen myself that I am not who I am defined to be. I We've been defined to be <laughs> below below average, okay, at the bottom of the ladder. But wherever I have been, I have excelled each time very well to, to the point that I shocked myself. And I had to question that, that I'm not, I'm not who I've been defined as. And so I told, I answered this question and said, you know, I feel that black people are, have never found their rightful place. And they're yearning to get there. They're not settling because where they've been put is not their right, rightful place. And I have discovered the rightful place. And I hope that you will discover the rightful place. As I delve into this history, I, I feel that a lot of things have to be rewritten. And I'm so glad that there are a lot of black people, scholars, that are turning the tables around and sharing so much about black people to the point that there is no other way to talk about Black History Month without revolutionizing the system, without redefining, without, without rewriting things by black people based on history through history and research and so i have five areas main areas that will have to be rewritten for 
the true history of black people to be told. Number one is history. The history of black people going back to Africa as taught in schools is based on the point at which uh, the Europeans uh, set foot in Africa and they colonized Africa and they defeated African kingdoms and they developed Africa based on their own principles and from there on they rewrote the history of of Africa based from their own point of view to the point that over this because of the school system we have learned about black history through that system and we have forgotten black people have forgotten their or their true history and through the scholars that have been uh, reading whose, whose work I've been reading studying and a lot of researchers also they are to be found on YouTube so that is an easy way to to find a lot of information and I was amazed myself I was shocked by what I found there so the history will and they're beginning to retell the story of history there is so much that was hidden that has to be set right so that is one area the history of black people is not correct okay it's not correct and second is the geography. The geography starting from Africa itself or herself. It's even shared now by many scholars that Africa, the map has been, is being shown to show Africa as smaller than it actually is. And so when you make somebody small or a country small, and then they become insignificant but actually it is the biggest continent and so this has to be redone as well the geography of Africa and the lines that were drawn by the Europeans and divided for instance because this uh, divided Africa to the point that people were displaced from their origins so there's a big mismatch and so this has to be redefined again the geography of the people and third this is very important they're all important is the sociology the sociology uh, how uh, how black people are being viewed i would say worldwide they're being viewed as if they are misfits in the society, unproductive to the society, troublemakers to the society, you know. And I talk about this a lot with my family. And if you study sociology, how people coexist with one another, you will find that there is competition and there's people who want to, to, to be on top of everybody else. And the history of, 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 of black people, since they left Africa, they have been at a great disadvantage because they've been put at the bottom as slaves, as servants, and even their education was not the same as everybody else's. And when you put people at a great disadvantage, systematically, there are more problems that are created, not only for black people, but any community. And people are left in a survival mode. Okay. And they get distracted by the everyday stresses. And there's a lot of brokenness happening. And so at the end, that leads to more and more problems. And if a society lives like that, and, and those problems are not resolved, then of course the end result is uh, problems. But that does not define those people because I have seen also that disadvantaged people, when they're given the opportunity to excel, they excel, they excel very well. So I challenge this um, teaching 
that is uh, that has defined black people as not fit like everybody else it, that has to be redefined because we have to talk about the systematic um, oppress, oppressive systems that prevent them from excelling and I would encourage also uh, black people at this time that wherever you are try your very best to excel despite your your shortcomings and use your intelligence to beat the system and focus on positivity on the good good qualities that you have the skills that you have and let those shine beyond your um and again victim mentality that people expect you to to talk about all the time but let your intelligence show and let that light the way for you third politically things have to be rewritten okay because we know that way back when africa was colonized by european nations european powers they put in systems to keep africa African leaders and Africa itself from rising. Africa up to today has been oppressed to the point that it's not permitted to rise higher because of these systems. And we see also that African leaders who know this problem and try to, to speak to other Africans to unite, uh, to unite the nations for the betterment of Africa. Let's say United Africa, the way uh, the United States uh, is one big country made of different states that could work very well for Africa, but it's not happening. And that's the reason why that one of the problems that I've I encountered living in Canada, and the big question is why are Africans always begging why is africa so poor and uh, i never really knew that i was a poor african until i came out here and people already have defined africa for uh based on what has been perpetrated let's say by the media and i had to go on the quest to understand why is africa so poor why is africa so dependent on on the west and the more and more I, I, I dug deeper, I realized that there is a systematic um, oppression that has never left, that has defined, again, black people all the way, uh, starting from the continent. And so these systems of, uh, of oppressing black people has never left. It's, it, that is a big problem. And lately, I'm asking myself, you know, why? why do black people have to be oppressed? Why do they have to be put down? And if you ask me right now, I think there is some greatness in black people. That if it's let loose, it's going to go wild. It's going to excel. It's going to show a lot of power, a lot of leadership, a lot of resilience. I think, it, I think that, and I feel that people or nations or the powers that oppress uh, black people is based on fear not fear of uh, and, and the fear of the greatness of black people that is my personal observation as a social observer political observer and knowing myself also I've gone through my journey and when I have freed myself to, to, to my greatness I am even scared of what I could become and I hope that this speaks to you as a black person, that there is such great power within you that is yearning to come out to greatness. And I'll say nurture that in 2024. That's where we are heading. And I'm sure right now in 2024, you are asking yourself these questions and you're realizing you're not in your rightful place. Okay, because there is the awakening of the African consciousness. Black people are awakening to their greatness, to their history and asking these deep questions. And they're not sitting idly. They are taking action to be uh, the best they can. And the first thing is speak about them. Speak about uh, the wrong things that were done and the wrong histories and all these things that I'm talking about right now. 
And so politics is a very big propaganda to uh, that has been used uh, against black people. But again, you are aware, or if you want aware, that there are some really subtle systems in place that if uh, many black people try to break out of those systems, they get assassinated anywhere in the continent of Africa, in the United States, and in other, in other continents as well, other places, in communities. We see that happening every single day. And number five, what needs to be rewritten is the education system, the education, because it has ignored a black history. It has ignored, um, and there is also a perpetration of uh, this, what I call the ladder system that talks, takes all the races and puts certain races on top. And then there's a second one, third, fourth, and the black people at the bottom. And that is taught in university. And I had the horror of listening to this in cultural anthropology in university. And I was just squirming in my chair because again, defining people that have been seemingly defeated by all those systems and not given the chance, the opportunity, um, the privilege like everybody else, because they have been put in a certain spot and now you define them as the lowest of intelligence. And I disagreed with my professor. I was not going to have that. So that has to be eradicated. That system has to be rewritten. The second area of education that needs rewriting is, has to be done by black people. There might have to be two curriculums, but it is not working the way that it is right now. Nobody even knows the history of black people worldwide, even in the continent of Africa. <laughs> they don't know their own true history. They don't know about the great kingdoms. It's not popular to teach about the great nations, the great kingdoms of West Africa, of East Africa, of South Africa. Can you imagine if that is rewritten and elevated, what it would do for the, um, for the minds of, of black people? And so there's a lot of omission, a lot of omission, hidden histories, hidden accomplishments, and that has to be rewritten. And the third area is uh, talking about accomplishments of uh, black people, all the inventions. Okay, there are many, many inventions that have been invented by black people. But again, someone else took the patents and wrote it to them. We know that uh, in the United States that happened. And so tell me, do you know a lot of the accomplishments of great uh, inventors of Africa, uh, from African descent of black people? But now we are discovering that and uh, I'm finding that there's so many scholars that are sharing those inventions. And I cannot go into detail right now, but I would like you to do your homework, your research, if you are interested in this area. So we cannot say that um, the accomplishments of black people, you know, when we talk about superficially, people like to talk about music, talk about food, talk about fashion, dance, theater, you know, all the fun things. That is just, uh, that is superficial, but there's so much deeper to, to black people and to the black history. And according, uh, if it's up to me, and I think it's, I, I support this greatly, is to go deeper. And as the black people, we will be the ones to rewrite our own history and to share that in the mainstream. And I have, I will close with some homework for you to study the work of Dr. Runoko Rashidi. And unfortunately, he passed away in Egypt in 2020 when he was on a tour. And he did many, many 
years, I think more than 25 years of research to trace the, the influence of black people in all the continents. And he documented that. Pictures, he talked to people, he went to museums and he collected so much. And that revolutionized me on my journey of discovering myself, my own identity as a black person. And so I will add um, a link to one of uh, Dr. Runoko's um, videos here or something like that, some information. And the second person who is from the continent of Africa is Dr. Arikana Chihombori Kwao. And she is very active right now in educating Africans and the people of African descent outside Africa as well. And her work or her intention is to unite everyone. And she's written a book. It's called Africa 101. And she focuses on um, the Berlin conference that happened that led to the invasion of Africa, the colonization of Africa, and the plight of African people through that. And she is I would recommend that you you buy that book and read it read it to your children and educate yourself through that and i am glad to say that i've had the privilege of sitting in a zoom meetings with dr arikana and she has really put you know set me on fire to look deeper at my potential as a black person but by understanding my history the true history, understanding my potential and understanding my role in this world. And as we speak right now in 2024, like I'll say again, there is the African or uh, black people, uh, consciousness, consciousness is awakening. They are asking questions about themselves, about their origin, about their identity and wanting to break free from how they have been defined. And we see that also reflected in the continent of Africa. Just recently, 2023, there have been three African countries that have broken away from the shackles of France that has colonized them for centuries, for decades. And France really never left. So this colonial system is something that I've been talking about since 2020 because I realized that it never really ended and all the African problems lead or black people's problem lead to that kind of um, system, the colonization system, it never ended. And so we see that uh, Niger, the country of Niger, the country of uh, Burkina Faso and Mali there are great examples of black people rising against an oppressive system. It is called a revolution. It's defined as a revolution. It's not a coup. Because a revolution, is, the way it's defined is they are taking back what is theirs. Okay? A coup is something else. So they're taking back their rightful place. And I hope and pray that more and more people awaken that the world needs Africa, for instance. The world needs Africa for all the resources that it has. And that's why, that's the main reason Africa has to be put down, oppressed, so that she cannot rise to her fullest potential and access her resources at will and trade at will like every other country. And I think that that could be also one of the reasons why black people have not found their rightful place. Because I believe there is a greatness, greatness, hidden greatness, like we've never seen before in black people, that the world has yet to meet. I like to say the world has, has not met us yet. What I mean by that is black people rising unhindered and defining who they are and contributing the best that they are 
in this world, in every area that they excel in. Not only sports, not only music and dance, but in everything. And so it has been predicted that going forward in this turmoil, in this chaos that's happening in the world today, it is a shift before order comes into the world. And we will see also that there is world powers changing. And uh, Africa is also positioning herself as a world leader. So watch out for Africa and black people rising and taking their rightful place in the world. Because the time is now. The time is now. It has been foretold. And if you have eyes to see, you will see. If you have ears to hear, hear it. But more than that, feel it within yourself. What are you feeling as a black person? Do you feel a change? Do you feel a shift? Do you feel new energy rising within you? I would say, let it out. Let it out. I feel that uh, since 2016, I have been feeling that power. And I had to make way for it. I had to make way for it. And it could be that something in your life has to transform uh, suddenly to shift you out of your present comfort zone. You might have to be thrown into the unknown in your life, in terms of a in job, in whatever. But watch out for that, because that is one of the ways that will cause you to, to rise, is the status quo will have to change for you to look at things differently. But it doesn't have to be that way. But you know in your intuition, in your heart, what's happening. And I would just say, embrace it. Embrace your true identity. If you like what I'm, share, um, I'm sharing today, I would encourage you to you know, share with other people. Subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. And until next time. Thank you.